Welcome to Jason Huda Galung, Jahat Multivers. Sekali lagi kita membahas tentang masalah Palestina uh, dari kacamata Mr. Scott Ritter, seorang yang saya sangat hargai dan saya dukung selalu video-videonya dan saya akan sebar di sini. Nah, saya bantu untuk menjadikannya dalam bahasa Indonesia atau menerangkan sedikit dengan melalui subtitlenya. Coba kita lihat di sini Mr. Scott Ritter. Kita mulai dari pertama dengan Mr. Scott Ritter. ever since the current conflict between Israel and Hamas broke out. But let's be honest, it's been unfolding for 75 years. 75 years since Israel declared its independence and began what is now known as the Nakba, the catastrophe on the Palestinian people, stealing their homes, stealing their land, murdering their men, and driving the survivors into an exile. In the case of Gaza, this exile has put them into what amounts to an open-air concentration camp, a giant prison of humanity where every aspect of the life of these Palestinian refugees is is controlled and dominated by Israel. You know, when we talk about what happened on October 7th, we we, we can reflect on the horror of the innocent civilians who got caught up in this, Israeli and Palestinian alike. Let there be no doubt there were innocent (coughs) Israelis who were killed as a result of the Hamas attack. Um, At least we have the intellectual honesty, uh, the integrity to recognize them as innocent. Unlike the Israeli chief of staff who has said there are no innocent civilians in Gaza. You know, this reflects the approach Israel has taken towards the population of Gaza, indeed towards the Palestinian population as a whole. They don't treat them as humans. They don't treat them the way humanity should treat humanity. They treat them as something less. They treat them as animals to be ushered here, there, uh, to be fed one day, not fed the next, to be left out in the cold one day, maybe bring them in uh, the next um, That's not how human beings treat human beings. And one has to wonder why it's taken Hamas this long to try and bring this issue to a head. Yes, Hamas has carried out terrorist acts, or if you're on the Palestinian cause, acts of resistance. It doesn't matter what label you put on it. You know, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. We we know how that works. But again, let's look at it from the viewpoint of the Israelis for a second. David Ben-Gurion, the founding father of Israel, Israel's first president, said that the Arabs and the Israelis, that the Arabs would be idiots to make treaties and agreements with Israel because Israel has stolen their land. Israel has occupied their land. Israel has brutalized them. And he understands the source of the Palestinian angst, anxiety, anger. But he says it's okay because this is God's will that the Holy Land is God's gift to the Jewish people, and it's just a tragedy that the Palestinians got caught in the middle. Moshe Dayan issuing a eulogy to an Israeli settler named Roy Rutenberg in 1956. Roy Rutenberg was killed in a kibbutz outside of Gaza by angry Palestinians who were imprisoned in Gaza. He said, we don't look to the Palestinians uh, and blame them. The blame is not theirs. They are in this prison looking out at us with hate-filled eyes because we have stolen their lands. We have occupied their lands. We are tilling the lands that their father tilled. They hate us and we understand that they hate us. We need to blame ourselves, blame our own. Why? Because we forgot, he said, that in doing what we have done, in seeking our destiny, we forgot that we must continuously hold the sword in our hand that we can never forget that as we till the soil, we must also take notion of the need to 
repel the anger coming from Gaza, that the weight of Gaza is on our collective shoulders. What does he mean by that, the weight of Gaza? The weight of two million Palestinian human beings. These aren't animals. This is not a statistic. These are human lives. They matter. And yet, for decades, the world has not acted as if they do matter because we have given Israel a clean bill of health to do whatever it wants when it comes to resolving the Palestinian problem with no regard to the humanity, the dignity of the Palestinian people. Israel has implemented a policy. The English language, it's, it's mowing the grass. Dahiwa is the, the policy that the Israelis have put on it. Mowing the grass, what does that mean? It sounds nice, it sounds copacetic, mowing the grass. It means mowing the people, mowing the Palestinian people, mowing the children of Palestine, mowing the women of China. And when I say mow, I mean kill. I mean murdering them, knocking them down like, a, like, like you would grass at harvest, mowing the grass. It's Israel's policy of disproportionate force. It's Israel's policy of deliberately targeting civilian populations to crush the will to resist. It is by definition a war crime. You are not allowed to deliberately target civilian populations. International humanitarian law has made this clear. And yet Israel not only does it, but acknowledges it as its official policy and the world is silent. The world is silent. Nobody speaks out about this. Nobody has spoken out about it. But it's allowed did, to happen because proud of that's you. the way it is. You see, in order to accept Israel in the family of nations, you have to accept the principles of Zionism, political Zionism. You have to accept the notion that Israel and the Israelis, it's an exceptional nation populated by an exceptional people that the normal rules and regulations don't apply to them, that because they are God's chosen people, they are allowed to do unto others no matter what, and they will not allow others to do unto them. That calculus has changed. What Hamas did on October 7th is said, no, that game is over. That time is over. There, Israel will no longer be able to rest in peace, that the Palestinian people through the resistance that is personified by Hamas, are rising up. And now what we see, through the sacrifice of the Palestinian people, who are paying a price because Israel is implementing its mowing of the grass as we speak. You know, a hospital was bombed. A lot of finger pointing going on. Who done it? Was it an Israeli bomb? Was it a, a, a rocket from the Islamic Jihad organization? We don't know. I mean... I think the uh, circumstantial evidence right now points to this being an Israeli action. They acknowledge that they bombed. I mean, this is, so, you see, we didn't bomb the hospital. We did bomb the garage. Well, if you take a look where the bodies are, whatever hit that hospital didn't hit the main hospital. It hit a parking lot, the garage, where the refugees were packed in because they had nowhere else to go, where the injured were packed in because the hospital was full. This mass of humanity, these Palestinian civilians, these innocent people were packed into the garage of the hospital. And Israel acknowledges, yeah, we, we may have done that. So their whole story about uh, a rocket flying air is a lie, is a lie. But it doesn't matter who did it. Let me tell you why. Because in the hours leading up to the hospital being attacked, Israel was bombing Gaza. Israel was killing innocent people. Palestinian civilians. In the hours that transpired after the hospital attack, Israel was bombing Gaza. Israel was murdering Palestinian civilians. Does it really matter in the grand scheme of things if Israel on this one occasion was responsible? No, it doesn't. Israel doesn't get a clean bill of health because they say, oops, this wasn't us, it was them. First of all, we don't know that, but let's say it was an errant rocket. That doesn't make anything Israel's doing right. It is still collective punishment. Those people wouldn't have been in the parking lot of the hospital had Israel not initiated a war crime, 
this illegal bombing of the civilians of Gaza, this collective punishment that Israel does, this mowing of the grass, this slaughter of the innocents. Nobody would have been in that parking lot had Israel not done that. So I'm sorry, Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm sorry, Joe Biden. I'm sorry, Tony Blinken. I'm sorry, anybody out there who's trying to promulgate the official Israeli position that we didn't do it. It doesn't matter. You are guilty and you're being judged by the world as you should be. A war criminal enterprise known as the state of Israel and its day is done. We have populations rising in the street. We have a Palestinian population courageously suffering whatever abuses the Israeli government, the Israeli military puts at it. We have a collective resistance starting to coagulate around the cause of the Palestinian people. But let me leave you with this. It's one thing when the blood of the Palestinian children lies fresh on the ground, when you can see it, the redness of the blood because it still contains the oxygen from the arteries of the heart that pumped it through the now dead body. It's one thing when you can smell the iron in the air of the blood. You can smell the death and you can become enraged. But soon the blood dries. Soon the body stiffens. The corpse must be taken away to be buried. The blood is cleaned up. What then? Right now, the streets of cities around the world are filled with people rightfully, righteously stepping out and protesting against the crimes committed by Israel, the crimes that are supported by the United States. And these protests are just, and they need to continue, and they must continue, but they must continue after the bodies have been buried, after the blood is dried, after the stench of death has gone away. You must stay in the street. You must maintain the pressure, or otherwise, Israel wins again. This isn't the first time Palestinians have died at the hands of Israel. It's not the first time people have protested in the streets. But over time, the protesters go home, the dead Palestinians are forgotten, and Israel remains unchanged, unbent, unyielding, continuing the crimes. The Israeli enterprise must be brought to an end. I am not advocating the violent overthrow of Israel. I am not advocating the murder of Israeli citizens. I'm advocating a political change in Israel where Zionism is no longer the theology that drives this nation, that Israelis no longer view themselves as exceptional people who are anointed by God to bring pain and suffering on the Palestinian people, on the Arab population of the world. It's time that Israel stands shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the international community as fellow human beings treating others as they want to be treated. If Israel wants to live in security with its Arab neighbors, then it must ensure that the Arab neighbors can live in security with Israel. Israel should no longer be allowed to have this army that it currently possesses. There's no need for an army of this side. Israel can no longer be allowed to have nuclear weapons and hold the sword of nuclear annihilation over the heads of its Arab neighbors, indeed over the heads of the world. Israel must become part of the community of nations, and it can only do so side by side with the Palestinian people that have been given the right to form their own state with equal rights, with, with all the privileges, all the dignity that Israel demands of itself. They must give it to the Palestinian people. We'll be discussing this and more on, uh, on tonight's show. I look forward to, uh, to having this dialogue. Again, Scott Ritter standing in for George Galloway the mother of all talk shows. Commentator, and he's the editor-in-chief of Rai <coughs> al uh, I, I welcome you to the, uh, to the show tonight. Uh, thank you for, for coming. Uh, that's one of the fucking Scott Ritter's beautiful, beautiful Nara Orator. And I hope you guys like it. And I'll talk to you guys later on. Please share and subscribe. Thank you.